Hello, my name is Dan Kovalik, and you're watching Voice of the Voiceless. Glad to be back with you. I've had a very busy time. I traveled to Syria and to Venezuela. Uh, today I'm going to talk uh, mostly about Venezuela, though via the Middle East. Um, people might be surprised to know that there are many Muslims um, and people from the Middle East living in Venezuela. Um, there are two mosques in Venezuela and uh, plenty of uh, Middle Eastern food, Lebanese, Syrian. And what folks may also not know is that Venezuela has been very helpful to many other countries, uh, but especially to the Palestinian people. I was at a, a, a Congress, the Bicentennial Congress of the Peoples of the World in Caracas, Venezuela. As the name suggests, I met people from all over the world there, uh, from Africa, from Asia, all over Latin America, the Caribbean, Europe. Um, and I met these two uh, Palestinian gentlemen. Uh, but interestingly, they did not come over from Palestine for the Congress. They live in Caracas, Venezuela. And you're going to hear their story uh, today on this program. And I want to especially thank Juliana Medeiros, a great journalist from Brazil, who really put this interview together. She operated uh, the camera, and you're going to hear her voice a couple times throughout this interview. And so with no further ado, uh, please check out uh, first my interview with Assad, who came to, Palace, to Caracas uh, from Gaza, but is originally from the West Bank, and he's going to tell you his story. So, Asad, thank you for joining us today. Um, first of all, let's just talk about, uh, you know, what brought you from Palestine here to Venezuela. Actually, it's uh, a complicated uh, situation, but it begins after I released from the Israeli prison. Uh, I was living my regular life in Bethlehem since 2002. When the Nativity Church has been saved by uh, Israeli uh, soldier. Which church? Nativity Church. The Nativity Church, the nativity church. where Jesus was, yeah, where we Jesus, think, was born. Where, yes. where, Jesus, where Jesus yes. we think he yeah. was born, yes. Yeah, wow. After they released us, uh, uh, you know, that uh, the siege uh, took like uh, 48 days. After that, uh, they released us from uh, the church. 13 persons sent to deported to Europe, 26 people, person uh, deported to Gaza Strip, and the rest they told us that you can go to your home to continue your uh, regular, uh, regular uh, living. But actually, after uh, like two months, three months, they returned to us and uh, arrested us all. And they sentenced uh, us different stories to keep us in jail. You know, it's occupation. I spent in jail like uh, five years, and I surprised when I uh, released that uh, they didn't return me to my home. They sent me uh, to Gaza Strip. And of course, Bethlehem, for those who aren't aware, is in the West Bank. Exactly. Uh, those are not contiguous places, Gaza and West Bank. You can't just drive from one to the other or walk there. It's very hard to get between yeah. and no, I... those places. Yeah. There, uh, there were uh, a war between me and uh, between my family. My family, my wife, my kid is in Bethlehem, and I live in Gaza. Wow! So that means you don't see her, are you? I can, yes, yeah. that's. Um, and first, before we talk about how you got from Gaza then to Venezuela, um, how were you treated in in prison? In prison, the, the situation, you know, it's not. A regular prison. It's not for criminals. It's uh, mostly politic uh, politicians in uh, the prison. Palestinian uh, people who uh, have uh, resistance cases, other cases. You know, <clears throat> it's a very bad prison. You will spend your day all in the. I don't know how to process. Maybe you know, solitary confinement, or no, no, in uh, shame camp. 
uh, in a tent. Oh, in a tent. Tent, tent, yes. Okay. In a tent, yeah. And so if the weather's bad... Even in, the, in your tent. Yeah, yeah. That's and so you end up in Gaza. Mm -hmm. And uh, what were conditions like in Gaza? In Gaza, I'm a Palestinian citizen. I live my life uh, regularly in Gaza. I uh, complete my uh, BA degree there in Gaza. And, uh, but I uh, was uh, there when uh, Israel attacked Gaza in uh, 2014. Wow. Yes. And a lot of people died yeah, in that. Of course. A lot of uh, civilian died. Right. I think, how many? Do you remember? Uh, the, the number uh, exactly, I don't know, yeah. but uh, it's uh, maybe between 3,000 and 3,500. I think something like this. Okay. And then, so when when do you move to Venezuela and how does that come in to be? In 2019, I uh, decided to complete my, uh, to have a higher degree in uh, my studies. Actually, I like his, I'm a good reader in history. So I try, I'm trying uh, here now to study the Spanish language first, then to complete my uh, degree with uh, history and uh, international relations. Were you invited to come here? Or did no, you... no. Uh, you know, Palestinian, uh, as a Palestinian citizen, I have an idea about which countries I can uh, log in without uh, like a visa, visa or, yeah. Uh, yeah, or an invitation or something like this. I searched the universities on the uh, internet. I uh, contacted the university here, and then I decided to come. So, would you say Venezuela is pretty open and hospitable to Palestinian people? You know, Venezuela have uh, Palestinians have a good condition here in Venezuela. Venezuela is a country, you know, it's uh, one of the biggest supporters to Palestine in the, in the world. That's good to hear, and I that was my understanding as as well. Um, and so you live here in Caracas then? No, yes, I live here in Caracas. In, in uh, private apartment or university housing? No, no, or? I have to this one, private, uh, private uh, apartment. Okay. Okay, and uh, again, how do people who you meet on a day-to-day -day basis in Venezuela? I, I meet uh, Palestinians here, uh, study, uh, students, sorry, uh, Palestinians who live here from Maybe 40 years ago, those who sent, uh, who was refugees in the 40, uh, 1948, yes. they say they uh, sent out of uh, Palestine, you know, uh, that time, and they began searching for uh, life better than the camp in the countries around Palestine, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and West Bank, Gaza, there are also uh, camps for refugees. They the life in the camp, refugees camp, is very hard. So they begin searching for better conditions to live out of uh, this uh, countries. So I meet people there from Palestine living here. I've seen at least one mosque here, which surprised me because it's mostly a Christian Catholic country here, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess there are some mosques here in I, Caracas. Yeah, I saw uh, yeah, there is a mosque here, two mosques here in Caracas. And one of them, the famous one that you saw mm -hmm. when you was coming here, yes. Uh, I, I think uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, complicated for uh, Muslims to live here. Are you able to get some Palestinian food once in a while? Some yeah, yeah. hummus yeah. and falafel? Or? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I went to one Lebanese restaurant once here in Caracas. Yes. Well, yeah. So one of them is uh, closer to me. Yeah. So probably Lebanese food is, is, is close yeah. to that, yeah. Now, is your family here with you? No, 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 not yet. Uh, okay. But may I am thinking to bring them here. Good. And they're still back in Bethlehem? Uh, come and go, come and go. Yeah. Good. So, oh, Assad, I, I have to ask you, you mentioned that you're from Bethlehem, that you're a Christian, and you mentioned that you, you know, the troubles for you began with the siege of the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. What was your role in that siege, or how did you get caught up in that siege? Actually, I was uh, working uh, the time with the uh, Bethlehem governor, and uh, I was uh, his driver. 
and uh, we have to look on uh, to the church to make uh, like a communication between the resistance and the priests inside the church. There were uh, like uh, ten uh, priests in the church. Yeah, and that's why I uh, looked in. Okay. Exactly that's why. Did you attend that church? Did you ever go to mass there at the? Did you ever pray in the church in the nativity or go to a uh, service? For me, I'm not a good prayer. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honest answer. Well, thank you, Asad, very much thank for you. coming. And okay. we wish you the best of luck, you and your family. Okay, thank you. And we're glad you found a home here in okay. Venezuela. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed listening to Asad's story. Uh, as you'll note, Asad uh, is a Palestinian, but he's not Muslim. He's a Christian um, from the town of Bethlehem in the West Bank. And I think a lot of folks, again, don't think uh, often about the Christians uh, living in Palestine, but they are a very big uh, and important part of the Palestinian society and Palestinian uh, history. Now we're going to hear from Hamed. He is actually from the West Bank. He came to Caracas, Venezuela, with the help of the Venezuelans, and received an education in Venezuela, a medical education, which he is now using to help the poor of Caracas. And so please uh, give a listen to my friend Hamed, who has an equally interesting story to tell. And you're also living here in Caracas, Venezuela. That's right. How did you come to be here? Well, um, I'm originally from Jerusalem. I was born in Jerusalem, and I lived in Albira City, that's a big city in the West Bank, uh, where the National Authority, the National Palestinian Authority, is taking control. And uh, I came here by an uh, according between the two governments, Bolivarian uh, government of Venezuela and uh, Palestine, to study medicine. So I studied medicine here. I came in 2010, and uh, when I get uh, graduated, I decided to stay here and to be grateful to this nation, to serve here, and also to continue my formation as a general surgeon. So I did this specialty here, and I, I, will, I, I founded here a very fertile land to work as a political also. So I'm here uh, doing a lot of um, work and uh, and a social level about uh, about Venezuela and uh, Palestine and uh, getting to the conscious of the people to convince them about the right of uh, Palestinian cause. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's a great story. Yeah. And do you have a family here? Is yeah, there... I get married here. Oh, nice. Yeah, I got married here and I have a, a son who has one year and uh, five months. That's beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, I think that uh, what are you doing here is uh, so important. So you can take the voices, our voices, to uh, the whole world if you can. Uh, and I will take uh, opportunity here to talk about uh, Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood, who has been uh, really uh, discriminated. Palestinians, original Palestinians, indigenous Palestinians in Sheikh Jarrah, they're facing a lot of problems by settlers, and uh, just right now they're facing um, uh, a plural uh, punishment by collective Israeli, punishment. Collective, right. yeah, by by uh, Israeli forces, who is uh, simply attacking them and taking them out of their homes just to put some um, another people from another religion in their in their place, and that's because against all of human rights. We cannot just say um, certain people is better than the other people just because you think God says so. No. We as Palestinians, we think that we deserve to be treated as all humans. And yes, Israel is an apartheid state. With all the definitions that you can find about an apartheid state, it's all coincide, it coincide with uh, Israel. Israel treat Palestinians like second citizen or uh, or citizen of three degree or 
we they, they do just don't uh, treat us like a, a, a normal citizen. We don't share the same road. We don't share the same. We don't share the same uh, car. We don't share the same transport. We don't have the same uh, wa- quality of water or quality of electricity. It's a difficult life to be there, but uh, Palestinian people are conscious and they have uh, uh, that, uh, and they understand the situation. The, the situation, and they they know that it's a very big struggle, and it's just. It's not just about Palestine. It's about the international law. It's about the dignity of all human beings. It's not. Uh, it's unbelievable that in the 21st century we are living a situation such like uh, uh, we're living just before 2,000 years ago. I saw even in terms of the apartheid. Of course, there's been medical apartheid. That the, first, the Israelis would not allow them. Palestinians to get vaccines, wouldn't give them vaccines. And then I just read, in fact, that Israel just gave Palestinians a million expired vaccines. They pretended to sell us. Yeah. And uh, in the last minute, in the minute 90 of the game, we discovered that they're just a point of uh, getting uh, expired. Right. And Neftali Bennett, the new Prime Minister of Israel, he just said, well, we prefer to send them to Palestinians. So uh, they look at, at us as a, not like normal humans. They don't care about our health. They don't take us seriously in health terms. It, it's not, it doesn't matter to them because uh, himself, Niftal Bennett, he, he said in a lot of occasions that he killed a lot of Arabs. They don't say Palestinians. They say they say Arabs to, to, to try to take our our nationality, to take our that we don't exist. So they they say Arabs, but they're referring to us. He killed a lot of Palestinians, and he's saying that he's proud of it. Right. Yeah, and that's a very typical view in Israel, uh, both amongst people in the government and also amongst many Israelis. I would love to 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 have a conversation with some Israeli left party because I don't think that a Zionist person can be from a left party. Zionism cannot go with democracies. It can't go with a with, with liberty process. Zionism is an ideological process who is planning to take more and more land to, ex- to, to make a lot of extensions. You can you can uh, uh, you can you can make a question a simple question. The territory of Israel. ¿Cómo se dice cuánto mide el territorio de Israel? ¿Cuánto mide? The size, the, the measure. Ah, the size of Israel. They don't know. They 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 don't know their borders because they're increasing every day. Today is different from yesterday. And it's different because they're taking more and more lands. And they don't recognize that they are an occupation force. So it's a, it's a very difficult situation. But we as Palestinians, through the years, we have faced a lot of occupations. And we have defeated them all. So that's why we continue fighting. We know that the storm won't uh, defeat a, a, a war tank. Of course we know. Of course we know. What the, we know that Israel has a very strong army, but we have the reason. We have, we have the right to be there. It's our land, so that's why we don't care about fighting against them and against. Unfortunately, a lot of uh, 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 several times against the U.S. government, who supported them, even in the last strikes that. Um, uh, Israelis uh, airplanes did uh, strikers against Gaza. They were selling uh, weapons to to Israel. Yeah, over seven hundred million dollars of ammunition because the Israelis were running out. They were killing so many people. Yeah, they were running out, and Biden approved more. So yeah. I, I I don't know how how U.S. government can talk about democracy when when you are supporting. 
a mercenaries. About 70 children, 70 kids were wrapped out in pieces. It's unbelievable. How can you support people like that? Well, a lot of us in the U.S. are asking that as well. For the first time, we saw a big manifestations, mm -hmm. a big protests in, in New York City and Washington. That's so great for us. The message is so clear to Biden and his administration. Listen to your people, because there's a lot of Americans against the war, the war. And you, as a government, you have to listen and you have to be a legitimate representatives of your people. So it's not just a political uh, situation. At this level, level, it's a humanitarian situation. Yes. We have to boycott every occupation product. We have to boycott every uh, occupation soldier. And we have to look forward to a peaceful solution. The Palestinian government is not the best of the world. We have a lot of debilities. But in the same time, we want peace. We will never support any terrorist group. And we will never be um, uh, part of any other project in the region. We just want a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital, as it was uh, forever, and the right to return for every Palestinian refugee who is uh, living since seven, uh, 73 years in refugee camps, a very, very bad situation. And you explicitly have the legal right to do that. Yeah, in every card of the United Nations. We have the, we have the right to resist. We have the right to return. We have the right to have our state. But Israeli is violating every single resolution of the UN. So at this point, how does the United Nations work? Where should we ask go? Where should we go? Well, we the, vulner the vulnerable. Where should we go? Yeah, it's a problem because, of course, all the power is in the Security Council, and the U.S. has veto power there. And in fact, Biden at least three times during the most recent conflict with Gaza prevented the Security Council from passing a resolution to end the conflict and to stop the violence against Gaza. They never stopped. The cease of fire, it, it didn't last too much. In Jerusalem, the situation is getting worse. In Gaza also, for four years, they were uh, bombing Gaza again and again. So what are we talking about here? And when a Palestinian wants to fight back, I don't, I, I don't represent Hamas. and I, I'm, I'm not part of Hamas. But I think Hamas did a good job. In that moment, to defend itself as a Palestinian, you have the right to do. It's, it's, it exists in the in the, um, in the in the documents of the UN. We have the right to resist. I can't be just watching how they're killing my family and they're killing my kids. So the Palestinian people, we have the right to resist, and the Palestinians generally we want peace. Seriously, but. The right government of Israel, extremely right, they are uh, taking advantage of the situation and they are opening a camp to the what we call the new right of Palestinians. Yes, uh, I would like to ask that at this point, uh, you know, and considering what is happening in Sheikh Shaha, in, um, I don't know, the continuing the occupation, um, there's some possibility of a solution to, to a, if at least a both uh, two states? Uh, I think that it's the only solution that can be uh, logical right now, the solution of two states. Because we are aware that uh, it's a different situation. We're not living in 1948, okay? They're not just uh, Jewish immigrants escaping from Germany or another country. When we welcomed them as immigrants in Palestine, we're talking about a big army. Okay? And we search a logical solution for our country, 
for our people. But we can't uh, cross the red lines for Palestinian people. Those are Jerusalem and uh, the refugee return. We have the right to the autodetermination of this. So this is our struggle. And we are defending all free people in the world because, I, as I said, it's, just, it's not just about Palestine. The whole world is in doubt with Palestine. We have to fight all together to, so we can have a peaceful world. Yeah, in the U.S., there's a lot of awakening about the Palestinian situation. Um, and there's now a real uh, understanding, in particular amongst the black community in the United States, how their struggle is connected to the struggle in Palestine. Of course. Um, a lot of security forces of the uh, United States, they are trained in Israel. Right. So they, they treat Palestinians... In, in Palestine, the same way they treat a uh, black person in the United States. You're not just the same. You're not just the same person. I cannot go, uh, I cannot go to uh, visit my family in Gaza or in Jerusalem because I live in another city. But an Israeli person, he can go wherever he wants. And there's a lot of uh, reports talking about apartheid in Palestine, about what we suffer. And Israel is, is trying to boycott all of these reports because they know that they qualify to be an apartheid state. And that's what we really want to um, remark. All people all the world must know and recognize Israel as an apartheid occupation state. Zionism is our problem, our serious problem. It's not about religion. They want to put it like this way, you know, but, but it's not true. It's not about religion. Assad is Christian. Yes. I'm Muslim. And there is a lot of uh, Jews who still have uh, Palestinian nationality. Yeah, a lot of Palestinian Jews. Jews. We have no problem with religions. Well, and the other interesting thing you raise, I mean, uh, in addition to Palestinian Jews, there's also African Jews who have been denied entry into Israel because they're black and African. They use them to put them in a low category of, a lower category of uh, their army, their forces. And they don't give them the best weapons. They don't give them the best equipment. It's an apartheid state. If you're not they don't have the same rights. white, Jewish, with origins from Europe, Russia, or Argentina, they're just not the same. I think for them also it's not a question of religion. They can all they, they use religion to dominate a lot of people. They well, use religion to say we were here two thousand years before. Yeah, man, but we were here. 10,000 years before. Well, in fact, the joke is uh, that many Zionists don't even believe in God. And the joke is we don't believe in God, but we claim God gave us the land. Right? So there's a lot of cynicism there, I think, amongst uh, Zionists. Yeah, they use religion, they use money, they use politics, they use everything that they can to control uh, that region and to continue increasing and extending and uh, unfortunately a lot of Arab governments are um, betraying Palestinian cause and doing uh, uh, normalization um, accords with Israel and it's uh, as we saw two weeks before or one month before it didn't stop Israeli attacks on Palestinian so what's the point you're making relationships with a killer. What countries would you say are the best friends of the Palestinians? As Arabs or in the world? In the world. In the world, there are not, as people, we believe that all peoples in the world support, are supporting Palestine. Which I think is true. Yeah. But well, what about governments? About governments, um, most of all, the left 
uh, parties who are controlling as uh, Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua, they are so friendly with us because they believe in liberation process. And um, in Arab, in the Arab world, um, we 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 are facing um, very, uh, a lot of difficulties uh, from Arab governments. But we believe that Algeria is the best Arab country who, who is uh, treating us because you know uh, Trump administration tried to cut all of aids that uh, Arabs give to the Palestinian Authority, and the only country who didn't take his um, threats was Algeria. What about Syria and Iran? Syria and Iran, they are very good friends of Palestinian cause, but it's not just a, an unconditional support, to be clear. They have some political interests in the uh, internal Palestinian situation. And um, it's a little bit complicated because it can be used some several ways, but we really, um, we are really thankful, grateful with uh, Iran and Syria. They are uh, strong allies, but we don't like to be used as Palestinian in the international, um, in the international level. We, we believe Palestinian cause is a cause who must unify all people. So you cannot just uh, support one Palestinian city or just one Palestinian party. You have to support Palestine because it's just about our existence there without any condition. And that's what is a Palestinian National Authority about. We created as Palestinians and we permitted the creation of Palestinian National Authority because we want to be here in the world as Palestinians. Not just as Palestinians who are in Jordan, or Palestinians who are in Lebanon, or Palestinians who are in Syria. No. We don't need to be in, in, in influencing. We have our right to, to, to say what we want to say as Palestinians. Because we exist as Palestinians. We have our uh, existence. We deserve to be there. So I hope you enjoyed hearing these interviews from Assad and Hamed. I think you have heard a unique perspective from people who have been aided by Venezuela. Even though Venezuela is under gruesome sanctions, murderous sanctions by the United States, this has not prevented countries like Venezuela and Cuba and Nicaragua from reaching out to other peoples, including the Palestinians. And I think when people consider the U.S. regime change operations happening now in those three countries, they should always be cognizant not only about whether those changes would be beneficial to the people of Nicaragua, Cuba, and Venezuela, which I don't think they would be, but also realize the fact that undoubtedly, if those regime change operations were successful, those three countries certainly would no longer be the font of help to people like the Palestinians, because those three countries now, with the governments they have, are dedicated to international solidarity in a way that no other countries in the world are. If you take anything away from this program today, I hope it is that. So thank you good day. This was Voice of the Voiceless. So on this program today, you had a chance to listen quite a bit to the discussion of international law, how international law relates to questions of war and humanitarian concerns. I wrote an entire book about this subject and it's called No More War. You can get it at Amazon or at your local bookstore. If they don't have it, ask them to order it. Thank you.